The second speaker of the afternoon is Kok Wai Chang on S Y Z and H M S for Torrid C Y manifolds. <laughs> it's very mysterious. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Oh, well, also, uh, I think we all know what these letters are. Uh, I will explain. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I want to also thank the organizer for giving me a chance to speak uh, uh, here with a very beautiful stage, which is basically impossible if you have a math conference in Hong Kong. That's too expensive. Uh, okay. And, and also thank you for uh, uh, still being here. For, for you guys. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. So uh, this S Y Z is uh, strumming the Yao and Sato, three people. Uh, these are not three people. Uh, this uh, it is homological mirror machine uh, conjecture by Kinsevich. Okay. So maybe it's more just <laughs> it's better to write Kinsevich here. Um, and I want to uh, let's see why it's Kalab Yao. Two two guys. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, two famous guys. <laughs> uh, uh, so today I want to explain uh, 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 hom basically homological mirror for Tori Club Yaws, but from the perspective of the Gromming to Yaws Aslo conjecture. And uh, uh, it is drawing work in progress uh, with. Uh, Daniel and my limo and Kasuki Red. So it hasn't appeared yet, but it will appear soon. Uh, so what I want to look at is uh, very concrete, just the following uh, affine variety. So I look at a harder surface in this C. So U B are coordinates of C2 and cross C star 2. So this W arrow is in fact uh, consists of co consisting of two coordinates. So I look at such a hyper surface where um, this uh, H is uh, a Laurent polynomial. So so we write as a long polynomial, where in fact this it is uh, such that it's consisting of two coordinates. So in fact you can write as w1 alpha one and then w2 alpha two. Okay. So this is a long polynomial. All right. So this is uh, a um, I'll find uh, uh, variety. Uh, if you choose uh, H generic, then it's smooth. And in fact, it's Calabi-Yau. In the sense, uh, you can find a nowhere vanishing holomorphic free form uh, on this space, <coughs> which is just taken by a, uh, uh, computed by a ticking residues. All right. So to study the homological mirror symmetry for this um, uh, 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 manifold, what I want to do first is to do a little bit of tropical geometry. In fact, it is preparation for uh, doing the X, Y, Z. So I want to do a little bit of tropical geometry. So uh, uh, let me introduce some notations. A is uh, just the exponents of this uh, Laurent polynomial, so it is just those alpha such that uh, C alpha is non zero. So it is just a finite set. And uh, I denote by P the uh, Newton polytope of this uh, Laurent polynomial, so it is just the convex hull of this uh, finite set. And I specify a certain polyhedral denomination. Okay. So uh, one of the simplest. What, what does that mean? 
First, Great. it's two dimensional. It's a polygon. How can you decompose it into polyhedra? Uh, polygonal? <laughs> polygonal, yeah. Polyhedron is three dimensional. Okay. But it's already a polygon, so why de decompose it? So let me, let me give you an example. To, to I mean, is there a requirement? Is what I mean. Yeah, so, so let's say uh, we have uh, one simplest example is uh, um, when this. Uh, Polynomial is just um, I don't know maybe one, uh, one plus w one plus w two plus uh, some maybe take it to be one one of the w one w two okay so then here you have this uh, lattice point uh, one zero zero one zero zero and also minus one minus one so you took you look at the convex hull you get this one. And by poly, I don't know, polygonal. Yeah. Polygonal. Uh, polygonal. Polygonal <laughs> decomposition. I mean, uh, a decomposition like this. So I just subdivide this polygon into uh, a union of polygons. Each of this uh, cell in the decomposition is regular, is uh, congruent to the simplex. Okay. Under GL GL two Z, okay. So it's a triangulation. Yeah, it's a triangulation. <laughs> and in fact, into unit triangles of area right. Right. right, right, right. Now, well, do you use only the vertices which come from A? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so there are a lot of conditions that I don't want all to write. All of them. You use all of them. I use all of them. Yeah, yeah. So you use all the interior vertices, right? Right, right, right. And I also assume that in fact the. Um, all the lattice points inside the convex hull are realized as the exponents in the poly poly uh, polynomial. Oh, okay. okay, so so it's regular in some sense. Mm -hmm. All right, um, and then I choose a function uh, on this uh, lattice point, uh, which is uh, so called adapted to this. Uh, Triangulation. Uh, well, in the sense, uh, meaning is uh, this new is a uh, restriction of a function. I call it uh, new bar, maybe. Uh, it is a function from uh, this uh, convex hull restricted to uh, this A, such that it is a piecewise linear function. piecewise linear continuous function and uh, the maximal region of linearity are exactly the same. Okay? So it's piecewise linear over here and it's linear on each of these small triangles. Do you assume it's convex or not? I don't assume it to be convex. The function you mean, right? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't assume it. But um, do, do I need to assume it? Uh, this is a regular triangulation. Maybe, maybe, maybe to play safe, it, I, I, I assume it is uh, convex. All right. So if you have such a function, then I can look at this family of polynomials. Which is uh, just scaling of each uh, term. Uh, now it's sum over alpha in A by this factor, t to the minus nu alpha, okay, and then w alpha. <clears throat> so where t is 1, you get back the original uh, polynomial, but then the property is like the following. If you look at zt uh, to be the zero set of this uh, polynomial, it is some have a surface in C star 2 and then you look at uh, there is a map which is just taking log of the uh, absolute values of those uh, coordinates on C star 2 that's called a log map then you look at this image I call that uh, pi t so this is going to be a Certain subset in R2 and it is called amoeba. So 
So it has some open fireplace, the same dimension. Right, right, right. But then the property is like the following. Um, originally, the amoeba is looking like something like this. Uh, let's see. Originally, the amoeba is looking something like this. Okay? But then, if you let t go to infinity, then it is approaching, well, it's amoeba, but uh, kind of, uh, it has bones <laughs> inside it. So it's converging to the so-called uh, spine of uh, this amoeba, which is uh, just the dual graph of this uh, decomposition. Okay, so that is a tropical hypothesis, a tropical curve. So it is uh, an algebraic curve in the sense of tropical algebraic geometry. Uh, maybe you need some scaling for it. Oh you yes, log. in fact, uh, this log is uh, one over t times log. Uh, but, uh, log of t? Uh, yeah, one over log. Well, it doesn't matter. If you have the t, you, can, you don't have to scale. Okay. Right, but, uh, uh, maybe it's one over log t. Mm -hmm. but, but let, me, let me just skip these details. <laughs> Okay. Well, here it doesn't matter. You haven't yet re you haven't yet taken the limit. So you know. Yeah, but, but but over there I need to take the limit. <laughs> well, after a rescaling. Yeah, oh. yeah. Okay. So um, now I just assume that T is large enough so that well, still we have amoeba, but is it, it is close uh, to this uh, tropical curve in the sense that combinatorially you really see the tropical curve. So I assume. T is large enough. <coughs> and then I look at this uh, hypersurface again. So, well, by some abuse of notation, I still call it Y. Because in fact, T is fixed. Uh, so it's again U D equals H. Uh, T, the T is fixed. Okay? All right. So now that it's uh, tropical geometry, I need to use it later. Uh, when I talk about homological mirror symmetry. But, but now, let's see how to uh, construct the mirror of this hypersurface using XYZ. Okay, so let me go to uh, XYZ vibration. Uh, in fact, it is based on work by Abu Zahi, Haru, and Katsaka. <clears throat> okay, so uh, first of all, to construct this uh, XYZ vibration, first of all, I, I need to uh, uh, specify I'm, whether I'm looking at the A model or B model. Usually, in this kind of XYZ construction, I will start with the A model. That means I look at the sympathetic geometry of this uh, uh, manifold. So, uh, the first step is, in fact, to uh, give this. Uh, have a surface, a sympathetic structure. And that is uh, done by following. So I equip uh, Y with the draw-up sympathetic structure. So uh, more precisely, I regard Y as the grow up of uh, this, uh, well, first of all, I look at C cross C star 2, and then I look at this uh, co dimension 2 subset, which is just 0 cross ZP. Okay, remember this ZP is uh, this zero set of this polynomial inside C star 2. So there is a co dimension 2 set inside this uh, freefold, and then I brought this freefold along this co dimension 2 subset. Okay, but in fact, why is not that one? Why is uh, this blow up with uh, let's see, let's say uh, I, I I call the coordinate of this uh, C U, and it is just the blow up with the proper transform of U equal to zero deleted. Okay, 
Okay. So I regard y as some blow up. Okay. And then uh, because the blow up operation can be done in synthetic geometry, so in fact I can equip y, but not y. In fact, I am I can equip the blow up a synthetic form. So this uh, blow up synthetic structure is in fact uh, some synthetic structure I call omega which in fact depends on a parameter called epsilon and satisfying the following so first of all um, the synthetic area of each exceptional p1 is epsilon so that's why we need, we need uh, to specify a parameter epsilon here so that means the blow up uh, exceptional set of this blow up is very small. Okay, I I I, I want uh, epsilon to be very small. And uh, the second thing is um, uh, this blow up map. So blow up of this C P of C star two um, to the original space is a symptomorphism. Away from a neighborhood of E. Okay, so that's the second thing that I need. Okay, so I, I need this to be a simple morphism, meaning that here I'm equipping this C cross C star 2, the standard synthetic structure. Okay, so I just take the uh, synthetic structure DZ wedge DZ bar on C and the uh, standard one on C star 2 and just add them together. Okay. What is exceptional one? Uh, for each point in this code, I mentioned two sets. You look at the uh, pre-image. That's the exceptional P one. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, okay. Another thing is maybe I should write here. Another thing that I need for this uh, uh, broad construction is the following. I want the lifting of this uh, S1 action. So I downstairs on C cos C star 2, I, I have an uh, S1 action acting on the first factor. So this S1 action acting on C cos C star 2, but in fact it's just acting on the first factor. I want the lifting of this S1 action. This action can be lifted uh, upstairs, but I want it to be uh, Hamiltonian. Okay? So I'm not going to the details, but uh, I can choose the symbolic structure so that these conditions are all satisfied. Right? So this is going to be the symbolic structure that I, I'm considering. All right? <clears throat> So now to construct the SYZ vibration, uh, the idea of uh, Abu Zayed, Aru, and Kasatkov is to first of all look at this S1 action. Okay? So now we have the S1 action acting on Y, which is the lifting of this action. And this gives you a moment map. So there is the moment map. And in fact, you can write down a formula for this moment map outside the exceptional set because everything is then over there. And, and that's uh, one thing which is important for later. Now, uh, we have a moment map on the whole of Y. And the second step, so this is the first step. The second step is um, we look at the synthetic reduction of this moment map. So we look at Y reduced lambda meaning that we choose lambda to be but in fact the image of this moment map is not the entire real line it's just half of the real line it's the positive real axis anyway we choose lambda to be in the image of this moment map and then we look at the universe of lambda quotient by s1 so that is going to be a synthetic manifold with uh, something called a reduced synthetic structure and 
what they proved is that, in fact, you can find a uh, map to C star 2 with this standard synthetic structure, but it is just, um, as I said, the standard one. You know the one with B star. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes. It turns out that, uh, well, this one, this symbolic reduction can be easily seen to be just topologically the same as C star 2. But the thing is, uh, there exists a symptomorphism. Symptomorphism. Really giving you uh, an identification between this symbolic reduction and this standard one. Now, on this C star 2, Again, making use of the log map, maybe with the T, we have a very convenient Lagrangian torus vibration. Okay, in fact, it's just Lagrangian torus bundle. Um, and then uh, we just uh, pull this, well, we just uh, um, transplant this uh, vibration on this side using this symptomorphism and then put it back to Y. So this gives you a map I call pi to a uh, to the base which is just in fact R positive cross R2. So that is an upper half space in R3, and that is the FYZ vibration. Meaning that it is uh, in fact a Lagrangian torus vibration. Uh, with singular fibers. <clears throat> you may notice that I'm not talking about spectral here. Uh, in one chance talk, it's very important for him to have the special condition, but, but I don't need here because I'm not talking about metric. All right, so this is the construction. Uh, I wrote it because I want to show you that there is really such a construction. But then the important thing for us to construct the mirror is not how to define this map. It's about uh, what is the structure of the base. So let me draw a picture about the base. As I said, it's just an upper half space. And uh, so let me draw, try to draw a three-dimensional picture. Okay, so this is the upper half space. And uh, in fact, you can regard it as a manifold with boundary if you include the R uh, equals zero here. Uh, include also the bottom. And, uh, and that's uh, corresponding to some hypersurface here in the blow-up, not in Y. Anyway. Um, Okay, so the important thing for us is that uh, the locus of singular fibers, that means the discriminant locus of this vibration, can be read off very easily. So namely, uh, a fiber of this vibration is singular if and only if it contains a fixed point of this S1 action. Okay? And uh, <coughs> you can... Uh, easily see that then the image, well, that uh, fixed point of the S1 action is going to be so, 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 so fiber is singular if that image if it contains a point, a fixed point of the S1 action. And it is if and only if it contains, well, maybe the fixed point of this S1 action is in fact inside the, um, how should I say? Uh, 
maybe let me call it the zero exception of the of the exceptional set. So, so as I said, uh, over each point of this uh, locus where you grow up, you have a p1. So for each of the p1, you choose zero. That gives you the uh, exceptional set, and it is uh, just um, the same as uh, this hypersurface in C star two sitting um, inside this grow up. Okay, and uh, in fact, it is at the level of epsilon. Here, if you look at the uh, image downstairs, and now uh, doesn't it have two fixed points over each exceptional? It has right, 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 right. But but we we already removed this block. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. So that's why you only get one. Mm. Yeah. So 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 uh, and that's the hyper surface upstairs, yeah. um, which is like a co-dimension two. Uh, a direct set inside this grow up. And if you look at the vibration, it's defined by the log map. So in fact, you can imagine that the uh, discriminant locus is somehow like the amoeba, because it's the image of the log map. Except you have this uh, symptomorphism here. So it's a, a slight distortion of the uh, amoeba, but, but I still draw an amoeba <coughs> for the single set. Okay, so this is the discriminant locus. And what is important for us is uh, not just the discriminant locus, but also uh, something called a wall. Okay, so in fact, we also want to have this data uh, called a wall, just like in the gross Siebert program. So what is this? It is the locus or loci of Lagrangian porous fibers. Which bound polymorphic disks. Okay, so it turns out that in this case, uh, the, this low side can be uh, easily described. It's just take this discriminant locus and then you <coughs> take the product of it with the vertical axis. Okay, so it is going to be some picture that is quite hard to draw. So kind of, uh, I have a vertical wall here. Okay, somehow, it, okay, can you imagine that? So it's going to be uh, uh, the product of this amoeba with the vertical axis. Again, this is a little bit cheating because I have this simple morphism here, but roughly it's like that. Now, okay. So where, where we have uh, the structure of the base described in this way, we are ready to construct a mirror. Okay, so there's something I'm confused a little bit. So the initial S1 action, it acts on the C cos C star squared, right? And so the only yes. fixed point it has is zero. Um, yeah, but 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 you leave it to be brought up. And then you have uh, the whole. And then it has a fixed point there. Yes. And so why don't I see uh, the fixed point down at the zero level and not at the epsilon level? Uh, because I, in fact, I remove that. So so I, I, I remove a, uh, a proper transform of the u equal zero axis. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 so I, I don't see the fixed point on that level. I, I just see the fixed point on the on on the. Well, anyway, the fixed point is going to be on the exceptional set. Yeah. And uh, for each of the P1, we have two. Yeah. But there we remove one. Right, you remove one. But the other one, why does the other one come to level epsilon? Uh, because um, this, is, this is the sympathetic area of the P1. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I, I choose the epsilon yeah, on this one. Yeah, okay. Good. <coughs> oh. um, all right, so now to construct the mirror, the uh, construction is like the following. Well, you see, this uh, wall divides the uh, base into several chambers. So in the complement of this amoeba, you have uh, many components. So let's say it is U alpha, 
and it is u beta, u gamma, and also u maybe u delta, something like that. Okay, so you have four components here, and um, uh, for each of these component, we can do the naive X Y Z construction as uh, has been described several times in this conference. So for each of this uh, chamber, we have this naive construction. You take the cotangent bundle cushion by a lattice, then, and then you can identify it with an open set inside that uh, synthetic manifold Y. And, and then the mirror is uh, given by this quotient of the tangent bundle. Okay? But now you have to glue these uh, pieces together. So let me call this U alpha check. <coughs> and uh, if you just look at the, um, uh, well, First of all, why are, why are these uh, complex manifolds? Be they are complex manifolds because uh, this open set U alpha has an integral affine structure. So you can take the affine coordinates on this space, and then you complexify them, and then take the exponentiation, you get coordinates, complex coordinates on this uh, quotient of the tangent bundle. That's why they are complex. And according to the uh, uh, how you choose the alpha coordinates, you, you get a grouping of this u alpha check and u beta check. Okay, so you have a naive grouping, which is given by, um, let, me, let me call the coordinates here z alpha 1 and z alpha 2. Okay, then the naive grouping is something like this. So you have z alpha i equals to z beta i uh, if lambda is bigger than epsilon. So if you are above the hyperplane <coughs> which contains the discriminant locus, the naive grouping tells you that you just identify this coordinates. Okay? But if you are below this hyperplane, then the naive grouping is saying that you should... Uh, okay, so let me write this way. z alpha i is equal to z beta i above the hyperplane, plane but it's uh, going to be uh, psi to the power beta i sorry, beta i minus alpha i and uh, times z beta i if lambda is going to be less than epsilon okay, so below this hyper surface, the grid is like that where psi is the coordinate corresponding to this vertical direction. Okay, so you have psi in this direction, but uh, if you look at the amoeba, then uh, you have uh, this, this is z alpha 1 and this is z alpha, uh, z alpha 2. You also have uh, this z beta 1, z beta 2 here. Why so for the two complex coordinates? Uh, because you are in different chambers. So uh, for each chamber, you have this coordinates, but then they glue together according to certain uh, grouping. But as we have the three folks, we have three coordinates. Yeah, and the, 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 the remaining one is this one. Yeah, so, so this, this coordinate turns out to be the global one. <coughs> you, you don't have uh, anything to do with this coordinate. Yeah. But then this naive gluing is uh, problematic because uh, if you use the, this to, be, to glue the coordinates, then you have monodromy around the discriminant locus. And uh, uh, that means you cannot extend the complex structure further. Why, why we want to extend the complex structure further? Because uh, in this construction, for each chamber, you take this uh, quotient of the tangent bundle, you are not constructing the mirror because you have removed Single fibers from this uh, vibration. And in the mirror side, you want to put it back. So, in fact, we want a partial compatibilization of the mirror, and that means uh, the complex structure has to be extendable to that partial compatibilization. So, this is, this is not good. This naive grouping cannot give you the correct mirror. And now, the key point of the SYZ construction is that you can correct your grouping. By uh, data from holomorphism. 
So that's why we want to look at those Lagrangians which bound holomorphisms. And in this case, in fact, it turns out that the corrective ring is the following. So uh, again, that is the coordinate on this chamber corresponding to uh, alpha. And uh, well, the corrective ring is uh, having no monodromy around the discriminant locus. That means uh, you don't need to distinguish whether it's above the Hubble ring or below the Hubble ring. You just have one formula. And that formula is given by this. Okay, so this is the correct ring. And uh, well, if you know, uh, if you are familiar with toric geometry, then you may recognize that this correct ring is going to give you the mirror y check as um, a toric manifold with a hyper surface deleted, but well, namely the hyper surface defined by this c equals zero. And what is this uh, fan defining the toric manifold? The fan is exactly the cone uh, over those triangles placed at uh, level one. Okay. So that's the fan. And so this b to two i and alpha to i just means the i for the alpha and the i for the b. Right. 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 So usually you have uh, maybe 0 and 1 here, yeah. and then uh, you see that this corrected ring is just by adding these two together. Because uh, this is not giving you the correct wall causing formula for counting holomorphic disks. This one is going to give you the correct. Alright, so this is the XYZ construction. Um, any questions? Uh, In fact, I haven't, still haven't touched my main point. <laughs> uh, all right, so we, we construct the mirror as a toric Calabi yard in this way. So this one is a toric Calabi yard. Now, what is the homological variation machine conjecture? So. It is, uh, well, okay, let me still pull conceive it. But of course, uh, the precise uh, statement in this case is not due to him, it's due to, uh, I think it's due to Abu Dhabi and Saido. Well, in this case, the homological version machine says the following. Remember, I'm still looking at the A side for this. Uh, affine hyper surface and uh, uh, so I, I look at I should be looking at some kind of Foucault category and here I'm taking the route Foucault category of this uh, synthetic manifold and this should, this should be equivalent um, maybe as a a bitting category or if you take the uh, triangulated structure as a triangulated category to the derived category of green sheets of this white set. Okay, so this is the uh, homological immersion conjecture. And I want to, the, the, the goal of my talk is to say that uh, this map, well, this equivalence can be done by F1. Okay, so this is in fact the goal of my talk. Uh, so to explain that, uh, the first thing that I need to do is to construct certain Lagrangians. So I'm going to what I'm going to do is to construct certain Lagrangian sections of the S Y Z vibration on this side. And if you believe in S Y Z, then you know that sections corresponding cor correspond to uh, holomorphic line bundles on the other side. And it turns out that in those cases, in this case, those line bundles will generate a whole. Uh, the right category of green sheets, and that's how we, we can prove it by S1. Okay, so let me try to talk about the construction of this Lagrangian section. Well, the idea is the following. So the idea of this construction is to use 
uh, Abu Zayi's uh, so-called tropical localization. <clears throat> okay. So, um, what do we do? Uh, the point is, uh, well, originally we are looking at this uh, HT, the family of uh, uh, Laurent polynomials. If you remember that, so it is given by uh, sum over alpha um, uh, C alpha T uh, minus T alpha W alpha. And uh, well, let me assume that C alpha are all one, okay? Because in this case, we are only we only care about the symplectic structure, and that doesn't affect the symplectic structure, all right? <clears throat> Now, uh, Abu Zayi's uh, idea is to look at, instead of this family of Laurent polynomials, look at this two parameter family of functions. So um, he chose certain uh, suitable cutoff functions called phi alpha. In fact, it is not a function of W. Uh, arrow is in fact a function of log of W arrow, so it's a function on the R2 on the base. But anyway, it is a function, a real function like that, taking values from 0 to 1, and uh, if you look at this uh, kind of uh, uh, sum of terms, and now it is not a polynomial because th this one is not a polynomial of W, but then uh, Okay, the property that this uh, function satisfies is the following. So over an edge of this uh, high infinity, which is just uh, limit t goes to zero, log t of this, uh, I mean the pi t, the amoeba that I, that I have uh, introduced. Okay, so this is the tropical curve. So over an edge of this tropical curve, let me draw a picture. So this is the uh, this is the tropical curve. In our example, and then over each of this edge. Um, uh, all but two terms of this HTS vanish. Okay? Mainly it is, in fact, uh, you choose this uh, cutoff function so that uh, when, when you're over an edge, if in the neighborhood of the edge, only two terms will survive. Okay? Sorry, I should be careful. Uh, if I'm not looking at HTS, I'm looking at HT1. Okay, where S is 1. Okay, so you choose the cutoff function so that they are equal to, all the two of them are equal to 1 near an edge. So that means uh, uh, the zero set of this function of HT1 is defined by this uh, two term. Sorry, I don't have C alpha anymore. Um, plus T minus U beta, 1 minus 5 beta, W beta. Okay, so you only have these two terms. Um, and if you look at the solution of this equation, well, that's basically saying that, well, in particular, the solution of this, solu this equation is saying that w arrow of, uh, let's say, beta minus alpha is inside, is a negative real number. Okay? And you look at the uh, image uh, of this negative real axis under the log map, it's just a straight line. Okay, so 
when you do this tropical lo localization, when you do this uh, deformation of the function uh, over an edge, originally you will get an amoeba, right? That's a, just a fattening of this uh, tropical curve. But now you really get an edge along here. And uh, this is the first thing. The second thing is uh, over a vertex of uh, this pi infinity, the tropical curve, um, or maybe near a vertex, or but three terms of this uh, H T1 branch. Okay, so that's still three terms there, and uh, in fact, um, the three terms all are all looking like that. So, so this tells you that the image is uh, under the log map <coughs> is very similar to uh, image of uh, this type of surface. I'm using W1, W2, right? So just look at this uh, uh, line inside C star 2 and then you look at the image. And that, that is going to be very, very similar to the image near the vertex. So in other words, um, by doing this uh, tropical localization, the amoeba is shrinking down to such an image. So near a vertex, you still have something like a two-dimensional thing. But then near an edge, and, and uh, away from a vertex, you, you really have, a, have an edge. Okay? So this is the tropical localization. Yes? But in, in general, you have to rotate the uh, image of that line to make it fit, because the three, you have three vectors that add up to zero, but they are not the standard three vectors. Yes, yes. So rotation is okay? No, I, uh, here I'm just saying that they look like the image of this one. And in fact, that, uh, more precisely, as you said, uh, that is true up to a multiplicative change of coordinates. Yeah, you have, you have to do a multiplicative and change. Z. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah so, so you have to do a coordinate change in order to change that <coughs> map really into, map in, into the image of this one. Okay, but, but what I want to say is uh, near a vertex is really like that. It's still like an amoeba, but over an edge is shrink to, to really an edge. And now the construction of the Lagrangian section is as follows. So, um, oh, I forgot to say, I'm, I'm now constructing a, uh, all right. Sorry, how much time do I have? Oh, very little. <laughs> <laughs> so, according to the schedule, minus 10 minutes. We started 10 minutes late. So, in principle, one more minute, but everybody has had five more minutes. So okay. Five more minutes. So, maybe it's very little. All right. So, five, five, five more, I think. Five more? I from think. Well, we started at 22, so you've had 50 minutes. Okay, five more because minutes. Because it's official. Right? Okay. Five, six, seven. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, then I have to be quick. So, uh, uh, okay. So my goal here is to construct a Lagrangian section of this part, right? You, you, you remember we have the XYZ vibration. And, well, uh, the first idea, or maybe the first observation, is the following. If, uh, let's see. So, let's say if I have a Lagrangian section called L bar, of this log map. Which, avoids a neighborhood neighborhood of uh, um, this z 
Okay, I, I, I also forgot the notation. I, I now denote the uh, zero set of this HT1 to be Z log, meaning uh, Z of localization. And, uh, and also a remark is that uh, the previous row of construction, uh, construction of Lagrangian vibrations, they all can be done in this case, even if it is not algebraic. Because uh, it is not algebraic, but, but, the hardest, but the zero set of this function is still sympathetic. Okay? So, and, and all those constructions, sympathetic construction. So those uh, can all be done. Now we look at the uh, SYZ vibration using that uh, zero set. And the observation is the following. If you have a Lagrangian section of this log map, which avoids a neighborhood of this zero set, then uh, I can define a Lagrangian section of this one by just taking the product of the positive real axis with L1. So this is a Lagrangian section of pi. And the reason is very simple. It is because we are using the Brewer sympathetic structure. So um, the reason is pi, this uh, uh, vibration map, is standard. Meaning that pi is just equal to uh, um, the log map times mu, the, the, the S1 moment map, um, away from uh, P inverse of this D delta cross uh, Z cross uh, U of Z log. OK? So, so let me call this neighborhood U of Z log. And uh, this is just a neighborhood of the locus we, which you draw up. Okay? So away from, a, from the pre-image of the grown locus, uh, the, the vibration is standard. So, so now the question is how to construct a Lagrangian section of this log map which avoids a neighborhood. Okay? So we, it reduces to this. And this is where we use the truck globalization. Uh, maybe I say it in words because I don't have enough time. Now you have uh, this u alpha, u beta, this kind of uh, chambers, and uh, so over each of this uh, chamber, um, we look at. So there is a construction by Abu Zaid. Construction gives you Lagrangian sections. Let me call that L bar alpha over this chamber, over U alpha. But then with the boundary on um, something I call H alpha inverse zero. What is that? So this H alpha inverse, uh, this function H alpha, uh, is defined as follows. For, so for each alpha in A, I define H alpha to be uh, minus uh, T minus nu alpha, 1 minus phi alpha, W alpha, and then plus uh, all beta, summation of all beta which is not alpha of this term. In other words, H alpha is just. Oh, I have erased that. <laughs> so, so, what is HT1? Uh, HT1 is sum of alpha of that term. Okay. <clears throat> so, H alpha is exactly this function with the sign of the term corresponding to alpha switch to minus. Okay? So you just switch the sign of one term to minus. And then, 
Abu Zayd's construction, he constructed Lagrangian sections with boundary on this zero set. Now I take this uh, uh, this L bar alpha. The claim is L alpha bar is disjoint, or maybe avoids the disjoint from U V log. If the neighborhood is small, so why is that? Uh, let me explain it over an edge. Okay. So over here, of course, it, uh, it is because of the following. The reason is uh, first of all, one thing is uh, the image of this zero set is the same as the image of uh, HP1 okay so in fact uh, this zero set and this zero set they have the same amoeba okay <clears throat> that's because of the structure of this uh, 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 cutoff function so over an edge is defined just by two terms but now if you switch uh, 1 to minus, it doesn't affect the log image. Over near vertex, it, it is just three terms. Again, you can uh, do a coordinate change so that the image are the same. So this is the first observation, they have the same amoeba. So in fact, these two zero sets, they are just uh, lying, they, they both lie above this uh, amoeba, but at different levels. Okay, so they are disjoint to each other. And then the second thing is uh, now over an edge. Um, so what is the condition of this zero set? So W two. So the second condition is uh, if you have W bar uh, arrow inside this H of the inverse zero over an edge like this one. Then uh, you just switch it, switch one of the terms to negative. So that means uh, this one is uh, positive. But on the other hand, as I said, if you have a uh, point inside this zero set, that one is going to be negative real number. Okay, so. So now you see that, uh, well, they have the uh, normal image is the same. Uh, I mean, the log image are the same. But then above this uh, amoeba, they are very far away from each other. So if you consider a Lagrangian section with boundary on this zero set, it is going to be disjoint from this one. And that's what we need by using that observation. So that gives you a uh, um, uh, construction of Lagrangian sections. And uh, now. You need to try to wrap it up because you're 10 minutes over time. Okay, maybe yeah. one more minute. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so going back to this um, uh, homological relativity statement, which is the Rob, sorry, Rob, the category of this uh, Y is given to the Korean sheep. So now using this construction, we, we grew this L bar alpha together. Uh, so, so over each of this chamber, we, we have one such section, and then we glue them together. They can be glued together exactly because I'm switching only one to be negative. So over this edge, if you look at edge alpha and edge beta, they are the same. I mean, the zeros are the same. So, um, so they can they can they can be glued together, and that gives you a Lagrangian section. So, so this is. This gives you a Lagrangian section of the XYZ uh, vibration. And then, um, so the last thing is, uh, in fact, you can do a so-called XYZ transform to construct a line bundle, holomorphic line bundle using this Lagrangian section. That's an explicit construction because, uh, well, each of this Lagrangian section determines the connection uh, over the uh, mirror of those chambers. And those connections can be glued together to give you a holomorphic line bundle. But unfortunately, I don't have time to explain that. Thank you so much. So, thank you.
since we're quite over time, maybe at most, a very small number of questions, like zero, one, or two. Zero would be ideal. <laughs> <laughs> we're 20 minutes behind, thanks to an incompetent chairman. So, yeah, why don't we ask you questions privately? Thank you again, and five minutes before two. Thank you. So. Calligraphy and dinner, and we have to get a train, so we can't yeah, be yeah, as yeah, flexible. I I'm sorry. So, you know, that's, uh, <laughs>